assignment. Hallelujah. Father, we lift you up. We handle your name. We bless you. You are faithful God. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. The word that spoke even during the spiritual warfare, the choir say, arise. Arise. It's the final hour. Lord, we receive grace to arise. The grace to move forward. The grace to take on the work of the Lord and our own work as champions in the name of Jesus. Lord, the ideology, the thinking that we have lost, that nothing has happened. Lord, I bind them, I cast them out of the heart of men and women in the mighty name of Jesus. As champions, as rulers, we move forward. The word said, thanks be to the Lord who always caused us to triumph. We move on as triumphant army in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We bless God for the 21 days of uh, waiting on the Lord, of receiving master key. I want you to know that the Lord has received, has given you the master key. He has empowered you. Now you need to go on to now begin to open the doors. You need to begin to open the doors. The doors that lead to greatness, to increase, to abundance. It is time for you to turn the key. You've given me the key. Hey, but I can't open it. I cannot enter this place now. I've tried to open it. It's not opening. If that's your son, your 20 year old son, go in now, open it. Ah. Hey, but it's Lord. Hey, but you have key. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What will you do? 20 years, son. You don't know? You don't know what? What's in your hand? That is how many Christians behave. The key is where? In your hand. Open it. Go in. Open it. Turn it. And the door will open. The Lord has helped us now we are going to begin to look at the door to open. The Lord has given us victory by his word. He has demolished oppositions. He has removed barriers. Now you must tell yourself what is the thing. Hey, it's the faith. It's the faith. It's the faith. Faith without what is what? What are you doing? What are you doing? I know I will be a star. I will, be, I will just stand out. I will be the champion. Really? In the church they say, eh, hey, some people, we need somebody to do something. Ah, no. We just want people who will teach children. Who will do the... Ah, no, I can't, I can't do that. And if somebody can lead, I can be at the background. You can be at the background. Hey, that's my nature. Fine. Then you are not a champion. Hello, church. Champions are not at the background. What did I say, church? Mm -mm -mm. They are the forefront. Hey, hey, no, no. Let them know, no. Let them know, no. Let me just stay here. Vision carriers. I'm not being, hey, this person says, hey, this person says, so I don't know what to do. What? When the Lord has given you a word, you don't know what to do. Vision carriers don't wait for people to tell them. They wait for the master to give a command. And the command is go straight. I have given you the land. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 6. Is it chapter 6 now? No. It's Deuteronomy. Chapter 1. 
from verse 6. Deuteronomy 1 from verse 6. Read for me. The Lord our God spake unto us. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb. Saying. Yes. Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Yes. Turn you and take your journey. And go to the mount of the Amorites. And unto all the places near thereunto. In the plain. In the hills. And in the valley. And in the south. And by the seaside. To the land of the Canaanites. And unto Lebanon. Unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he had promised. Thank you very much. There was a time the Lord has done the miracle, the Lord has broken the yoke, broken the chains, giving the people on the path to greatness. And they were going, and they got to a, a place, and they stayed because the place looked comfortable. And God was expecting them to move, expecting them to go forward, and they didn't go forward. God had to charge for them. And that's what we started reading from verse 6. That the Lord spoke to us in all rape that you have dwelt long enough in this place. Hey, but you know, God is you that will use your supernatural power to carry us. What your leg can do supernatural power will not do it. What your brain can do, why do you think he gave you brain? Why? To do what? To think. So, mister, put on your thinking caps. What did I say? Mommies, put on your thinking cap. Hey, I know, when I just go there, something will just happen. Nothing is gonna happen. Put on your thinking cap. That's why I gave you brain. God had to charge for them. You have dwelt long enough in Oreb. Arise. Take your journey. Go forward. And that's the charge to us, everybody. What are those inspirations? What are those things that the Lord has been giving to you? Hey, let me just wait. You are finished waiting on the Lord. Take a step of faith. Move forward. Look at what the Lord told them. From verse 6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorite. Go and pursue them. To the mount of which people? Amorites. They are giants. They were in the alarm, but the Lord said, Go in and possess the place. He said, see this day, I have what? What did the Lord say there? I have given you the land. Is that not what is there? First what? Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. What a word. Go in and possess it. What are the ideas God has been speaking to you? Hey, I know. I just know one day something will just happen. Nothing is going to happen. You and you will make it to happen. I know. Hey, you know, you know, you know. We so stop taking. You talk as a weakling. For me, was speaking. He said, Look, don't let, don't try to win pity. You know, that is the lifestyle of many Christians. So they talk like this. So people will pity them. Oh, sorry, so hey, what are you going to do in fact? My sister, I don't know. Some people love Jesus so much. Much, much gift and less action. The Lord told them, you have dwelt long enough at this level. We level are you? We level is your family? We level, are you satisfied with that level? We have prayed, we have waited upon the Lord. The next thing to do is what? 
take your journey and turn rightward or left or forward how the Lord leads you and take your journey carry the battle to the camp of the enemy ah we are still small you know that's what the children of Israel that's what they told God when the Lord said look go and spy out the land of Canaan I've given you the land send 10 spies and the 10 spies went they were spying and they brought big big grapes big big fruit and they came back and they told Moses we cannot take that land oh they are children they are giants there yes we know it's a land full of milk in the book of Numbers 13 and 14 it's a land full of milk it's full of honey everything is good look at the grape we brought very big look at this one very big but we are like grasshoppers you call the army of the living God grasshoppers? Do you know what you are talking about? When the Lord said, I'm going with you like a mighty, like a mighty army, as a mighty one, terrible one, you now say, you are grasshopper. You said, and they said, they are wise and children shall be prey to these people. And God said, as you are spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. All of you up to 20 years that you have seen my glory, that you have seen my power and you talk about me like this. Disdaining me. Disrespecting me. Despising what I've done. All of you will not go to the, you will not get to the promised land because these carcasses, your flesh, that you think these enemies will eat your wives and children. I will carry your wives and children to that land. But all of you will be buried here. See God. So when the Lord Jehovah is fighting for you and he says, let me go. Hey, but this person, this uncle said, hey, who is instructing you? Is it the uncle of God or the spirit of God? You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Take your journey and what church? What did I say? And what? Take your journey and what? Go forward. Go forward. What is the assignment you have? You see, the, the main thing that makes a lot of people meet roadblock, meet a uh, slippery ground. Uh, I pray for you, church, you will not fall into slippery ground. Your enemies, the people are, who, are, who are incensed against you, their ways shall be dark and slippery in the mighty name of Jesus. But my God will, will be the light unto your path. He will be the illumination unto your pathway and you will never walk on slippery ground. When you are following God by his instruction, there might be mountains there, but that is the God, the commander of the army. The Bible is at his presence. Mountain makes melt like wax and small small hills they jump about as if they are lambs because the presence of the Lord is moving what has the Lord told you is able to carry you along he said in that scripture go in verse 7 turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorite and to all the places near thereunto in the plain in the hills and in the valley and in the south and by the seaside to the land of Canaanite unto Lebanon this, 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 this behold I have set the land before you go in and possess the land hey the Lord has said go in and possess I want you to tell yourself I have been empowered let me plan for my action I'm going to be speaking with us on diligence and hard work yields great result many people that could have been diligent and hard working and they say this thing eh, we don't know it has not been yielding fruit and that's why I've given you the preamble the Lord said what? You have dwelt long enough in this place. Ah, me, I cannot buy land. The other land we bought, gave problem. And these people, and all these people, they took it. That is what I'm telling you. That one is 
past, you will recover your life. Meanwhile, step out into the investment God wants you to have. Many times when we talk of investment, some people ah, don't like to hear that word. Why? Because you see it's bigger than your level. And that is why God wants to take you to that place. Diligence and hard work yields great results. Let's see Psalm chapter number 1 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm chapter number 1 
There is nothing special. Others that have done it, they didn't even get anything. Who told you you are going to get something? It's because you're a peculiar people. You're a royal priesthood. You are an holy nation. Because God has chosen you to show the glory and the, 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 the light of you has come out of life into his marvelous life. That is why that small thing you do, heaven announces it. And people say, where is the one who did it? Who owns this one? This is the one we want. Because there is a God factor mixed with your effort and changed the whole story for men. He changed the whole story for men. They wanted to enter the land of Jericho and God told them, let them march around, march around every day for six days once and on the seventh day march around seven times and the enemy will be laughing at them. We are the bull bulldozers that they want to use. We are the military tank. We are the thing. Do they have dynamite to blow our wall? I could imagine, I could see many citizens of Jericho laughing at the Israelites. They are marching around. They are marching around. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us that are saved, the power of God. When the Lord begins to direct you, Holy Spirit begins to lead you in a way it appears as if it's foolishness. No. Even the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Bless God, number one, church, youth. That is the surest way to greatness. That is the surest way to favor, to abundance. The Bible said that man that delights in the Lord was so ever he toyed shall what? Prosper. It is not a request. It is an instruction. It is a principle. It is a law. It cannot be broken. Church, I want you to delight in God though. Don't forget you are not serving God because of our king, okay? Because of uh, 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 this Christ that wrong. Uh, it, was the, it was our land. No! You are serving God because he's God. We know he's God. And from what we read in that scripture, in Exodus, the Lord said, these people knew me as God Almighty, but I am coming as Jehovah. Hallelujah. The Lord is going with you as Jehovah. The mighty God that cannot be stopped. That nothing is impossible for him. Making number one church. Brothers and sisters, for your own good, not for, not for good of pastor. Pastor, the way you are serving God is the same way pastor is serving God because you do watch miracle. Mommy, don't you want? I want, Pastor Lanyon, I want miracle of God. As you are serving God, I'm serving God because I want, I like something that sparkles. Shine, shine. Everybody knows that with me. Something that sparkles. Is it dress that sparkles? Is it shoe that sparkles? Everything about me. So also, I want a life that what? Sparkles. I want a career that what? Sparkles. I want a wife that what? Sparkles. I want everything that sparkles. So I must stay on course with God. So that I can continue to have my what? Coat of many colors. Sparkling. I want you to put God number one because that's the surest way. And when you have done that, we now want to look at some steps you need to take. Hmm. Number one, I say, what are you doing that God will bless? What work are you doing? We read in that portion that whatsoever you lay your hands upon shall prosper. What are you doing, sister? Brother, what business are you doing? Eh, I've been waiting. Eh, they didn't employ me when I graduated. Can't you look for what you can be doing? On the side, we have a man. When I need working there, he was working as a laborer. He wants to carry this. Ah, I can carry. We'll go and help carry. And workers, the masons are working. He will be carrying sand for them. He will carry this one for them. See, man, he will mix it for, he will go up. He would. There was a time he quarreled with one of the other and they sort of wounded themselves. 
But he said it doesn't work. This person is too young. But he, that did not stop him supporting. When they were doing plastering, he too, he was mixing for them. He was mixing cement and sand for them. And after some time, they gave him some portion, hidden area to plaster. He too, he was watching them, watching them, plastering, watching them, doing this, supporting them. Now he has got a job directly to plaster parapet, to do this one, and even when those who were employing him, they don't have job, he still has job. He will do this. Ah, no, this one is too much. I can do it. I can do it. Ah, this one. Hey, that person's money is too much. No, I will lower my own money. I can do it cheaply. What are you doing? Be dedicated to it. Give yourself to it because that is what God will bless. God needs a platform to bring abundance. But if you are doing nothing, eh, there are people have encouraged. Hey, I was working in this company and we are, this is the kind of what we do. And uh, the company folded up and no more work. I sent a message to this person. Well, you are aware that, but they know where they work now. Hey, but what of these people who are doing iron bending? Join them. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah. Even this brother doing the iron bending was a welder, but no welding job. He started doing iron bending. Tell this man to come now. So what does he do? He stays in the house. No, it's impossible. A man with wife with children, you have no source of income. You cannot go out to different sites. What are they doing? I mean, well, that no, we don't, we don't have any welding work here. But I can carry blood for you. But I can mix this cement for you. But I can hold this rod for you. I send a message to this brother, different people. He had no job. He has no job. He sits in the house because he's looking for a welding company who will come and employ him like the olden days. The welding company has folded up. What can you do? What are you doing where you are? And I just pity that man. I really pity him. You stay in the house. Your wife will be struggling to make ends meet. Your children are and you just sit in the house your wife will bring food and you open your mouth to eat it what does the bible say Who do, whosoever does not work no if you do not work don't eat and this man will sit down the wife will go to market come back very late the wife will go and sell the the wife will do the and the man woman will try to prepare food and he will sit down and eat somebody should give me blala let me go and blala him blala laziness out of him blala laziness how can hey i've been looking for welding work you create a welding work Hey, no, I don't have a welding machine. What were you doing all the years that you were working in welding company? You collect the money, you spend everything. What you should save to buy your own welding machine. You fail to do it. You are not blaming somebody. You say it's the welding company. Keep quiet there. You say it's the welding company. Which welding company? They were so magnanimous. You have worked for them for, for seven years, eight years, ten years. What did you save out of that? And no, they didn't give us special grants. Why should they give you special grants? Have you done special work for them? And no, now, have the one look at this thing. We welded it. Were you not paid? Was it free of charge? You were paid. Why are you not thinking? Why were you thinking that that salary they were paying you belonged to you alone? I've told us which people own the salary you are earning as a man. Your children, is their own part of it. If you spend all of them, you're a thief. All your salary you don't save, you don't save. You said, the, Come on, I was ah, uh, you are a thief because you are stealing from your children unborn, or you are stealing from those small, small children. It doesn't belong to you. No, my life, I don't want stress in my life. If there is no, if I don't get, I will pack back to my father's house. Shame on you. You pack the fact to your father's house. 
was it you that gave your father money to build a house? Hey, he's my father now. So what will you give to your children? What have you built for them? You must walk, church. You must walk. Don't think somebody will give you. It's an error for you to think somebody will give you. Because God wants to see what you are doing. He said, whatsoever you lay your hands upon, it is a law, church, shall prosper because you delight in God. You see some teachers, as they are teaching, they have lesson, how they go to, they do, they are working hard. A friend of mine, a colleague of mine, we were in school together at the university. We graduated together. Then later I joined Shell. Much later he joined Shell. And he's been in Shell. He just said it will be he too will be retiring. Because he too will be 60 in the next one or two months. And in our session, we all know his story. Somebody said, No, we don't know on the platform. He said the parent, of course, the dad died long, long time. Didn't know the father. But the mom was struggling. They were selling his it uh, amala or something. So he the, he struggled to go to secondary school. Now, when he was able to finish secondary school, he didn't have money for jam or anything. But somebody connected him to a family. He was going there and teaching them maths and physics to prepare their children for jam. So he was going there. They just noticed this young boy. And so why are you not going to invest in? Eh, it's only my mama. And she, he doesn't, she doesn't have money. This one. That's how they gave her money. They gave him money to go and buy jam for. Of course, the following year, he entered. That was why he, he joined us. We were in university together. He said it was this same family that used to give him money. The mother also will give some, this little. This family were sponsoring him. Now, if he did not have the heart to say, I can do it. Some people will say, come and teach. Ah, me, I can't teach. Which one can you do with, with your free mind? What? He graduated. In fact, he was the best graduating student when we finished. He had first class. But his, his fees were badly paid by the people he was teaching their children to prepare them for jam. When he wanted, when he had not even gone to jam, he was preparing them because he had finished from 5, SS3. And it was good. But what really happened, he set his mind. He wants to be of service to people. He wants to be relevant and impactful to somebody. Church, what do you have in your hand that you are doing? That is what God will bless. He was teaching them, preparing them for jam, for wahe, and that was how God touched those people said they pay up to 60-70% of his trial he stay at the University of Ife while the mother also was supporting before they would decide to pay for him they must have seen his attitude his composure though he didn't have much money but the way he would teach the children ah, do you think you just be teaching with frown face you, you, you be, you, you be you, don't so rude to the children do you think by that they will sponsor you they must have seen that it was good. They must have seen that the, the, the in relation. They must have seen he was not pursuing his own interest alone. There are so many people. Once they feel they cannot get something somewhere, they don't go. Mm, they must be, it must be something for and what will they get? Don't have that attitude. What did I say, church? The treasures are hidden in places that nobody expects any treasure to be there. Treasures are hidden in places that nobody expects anything of value to come. You go to a place, ah, when I go to that church, this person will help me. That's where I'm going. So when you come around, you don't see that person, you are not going. And when I go to church, maybe that man will do this for me. Maybe you are missing it. Go to the church, serve God because your heart wants to honor God. And let God give you that treasure that when people see what is this rubbish you are carrying they just leave you alone what is this rubbish they leave you alone but you don't know 
what is there, you just trust God. See, it's the Lord that directed you there. You just keep it. But the day that thing is needed, that was the day God will open your eyes. And you now know you've been carrying gold. You have been carrying treasure. Because you believe divine instruction. Do something with your hand, church. If you are not diligent, you cannot rise. No company will promote you if you are not diligent. No company. I have not seen such company. Except it's your father's company. That whether you do well or not, they say, ah, no, we must make her the director. We must make him the director. Even when he's wasting the money. But if the father, your father is here alive, who started and ran that and built that company, and you are a son that is wasteful, you are a son that is not resourceful, you are a son that is not intelligent, he will remove you from that company before he dies. I'm very sure, except it was not his own company also, he just got there, started spending money. But if that man beat that company, and you are the son or you are the daughter, and you are so wayward, you are so, you are, you are not reliable, you are irresponsible, there is nothing they give you to do, you deliver, you are, you are too carefree, you lie, let us do anyhow, what company do anyhow, you are fired, why is it your father's company, even when your, is your father's company and he's there, he will send you out, Okay, he called you, call you, come, Benga, come. Okay, what do you say you want to do? Hey, Papa, I want to do this. And the man will be assessing you. Be assessing you. Okay? Like, how much is it? In his mind, he will say, I'm assuming I'm giving him his inheritance. And the father will say, Okay, you know, your small brother is coming up. I want to give you some money. He wants to say to you, and when the time comes and you are coming by, we tell you, I said, yeah, I've said to you, come on, get out of here. I have tested you. I have tried you. You have never been responsible. You have, look at this thing you were trying to do. You wasted my money. You look at this one. You wasted the money. Look at that one. So, you now say I should give you the company. Impossible. I will that company to your younger brother. I gave you money. Hey, but that money is finished. So, when I started my company, who gave me money? Who gave me anything? Nobody gave me. So, I've given you that. But because you are my son, I will just give you this two million. And that's fine. I go. A rich neighbor father will not endure the son however dear the son is. A rich neighbor father, a builder that has chains of things each time he's assessing each of the children. And of course, he's, in, he's the one he's going to be very, very honest with himself. If I leave this thing with this boy, what will he do with it? If I leave this thing with this girl, what we should do with it? So I want to tell you, church, you must tell yourself, I must be resourceful, I must be responsible, and I must be productive. What did I say, church? Productive doesn't mean to be productive. I must have something I bring to the table. Hey, but I'm a son. You are a son. Yes. Not in the company. The father can decide, I have how many houses? I have five houses. Okay. I give one one. Remaining one. Okay, that one is your mother's own now. You take one one house. That's what I'm giving you people. Hey, what of money? What of the company? Which company? Is your name among the board of directors of the company? I will give you people some money. But one of them or two of them that he has assessed and has seen that that one is upright, dutiful, can manage things, can be responsible. He will put that one's name to come and run it while he's still alive. And that one will begin to run it. So church, let's make sure we are doing something. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. I say, as a star, be committed and do not waste company time. Waste company time on frivolities. Hmm. You know some people work in the company. Why they are there? That's where they are doing something on the internet. Maybe they are even using company internet. They are doing what is not company related. I want to tell us, we know many companies now, they are IT department. 
they monitor everybody that's connected to their website. Everybody they monitor it. They have an I, they have a department that monitors it. So those of you working know it and know it for sure that you are being monitored. Many companies now they have CCTV all over. Many companies now they have a means that they can hack into your laptop. Don't forget they gave you the laptop. The laptop is licensed to them. They can monitor what you are doing there. So let's watch it. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I said, avoid postponing assignment. Okay, I know they say we should do that. Hey, okay, I think next week when we come, I will do it. Why? What are you doing next week? No, no, I just want to know why. And you know, tomorrow is Friday. Now, thank God it's Friday. So well, what does it mean? What does that mean? Thank God it's Friday. No, no, no. I want to know what does it mean. Okay, I should remove Friday that you are not coming to work. Ah, I will come to work. Now, what, what value are you bringing to the company on Friday? You come to work and you tell me, thank God it's Friday. What does that mean? Eh, so that we have social events. No problem. So I will pay you half day now. The other half day, you go and use it for, for, for thank God it's Friday. Ah, no, I will stay till we close. When you stay, what are you doing? So that time I gave you, I want you by close of business on Friday. Why are you postponing the assignment? Now, when you like to postpone things, even in the business you are doing, people give you, and you say, eh, I'll give you two weeks. Why do you want to wait for the two weeks? Somebody else will come. You say, I will deliver in three days. You are still talking of two weeks because you removed all the Fridays. Thank God it's Friday. Let's go. Ali, I go and see my my, my, my friend who stays at Burukiri and I, no, we have always agreed when we're in school every Friday all of us we meet when you're in school when you don't know your left from your right you don't know what it means to be jobless and you don't know what it means to have a job that is producing he said you, all of you agree you meet Friday, you are not bringing you are not bringing that to the company is that company paying you for your friend no don't postpone assignment. Anything that you have to do, do it well. Or some of you, you believe God will make you a champion. When there is an assignment, don't, don't try and throw yourself back. Hey, no. Hey, let somebody lead. Let me just stay at the background. Then you are saying you don't want to stand out. You don't want to, to be one in a million. You just pray but from your heart. No, you don't have the you don't have the intention of standing out. And that was why right when there is an opportunity to lead people, to be the leader in a team, you, you, you draw back. And no, let, let Mr. Goriola be the leader. Even, even the manager. I know Goriola is not very competent. Plays a lot. You, I think you are competent. You are now telling Goriola who I am assessing higher than you, uh, lower than you. I assess you higher. And you are telling me, then I say something is wrong with your sense of judgment. Then I will mark that person down. No, this one. And what is doing you? You feel you are shy. You feel, eh, maybe I can't do. Who says you can't do it? I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me. When you hear the word of God, it should build your capacity. If you build your ability to, sub to subdue mountains, Look at what the Lord said. He said, you have dwelt long enough upon this mountain. The reason why many Christians have remained where they are is because they refuse to take a step of faith. Eh, let somebody come and do it for us. The Bible says, and the four lepers in the book of 2 Second Kings chapter 7, they say, why sit we here till we die? If we sit here, we die. If we go to the camp of Syrians, they can kill us. If we go to Samaria, they will stone us. Come on, let's and fast. Samaria is, uh, is locked anyway. Let's go to the camp of the Syrians. If they kill us, let them kill us. People that stake their life for something they believe in in God, they don't die. What did I say, church? People that stake their life based on something they believe God that God was leading them. No, they don't die. Even if they don't win at that time, they may not win 100%. But they might get 50% victory. And why did they get 50% victory? They are learning an, a way that that thing cannot work. 
So they learn from that aspect. They gain small. So when they want to launch out the next time, they know it will not work here, it will work here, it will not work here, but they build their capacity on the ability of God to give them victory. They build their capacity on the fact that the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and therefore, no power that can stop me. The Lord can redirect me if that's not the way, but I'm taking the step of faith and I'm moving forward. I am not staying here again. God told them, you have dwelt long enough in no rev. Come on, take your journey, move. Why are you staying? The Lord wants to do great things in your life. The Lord wants to do great things in your family, in your business. Do I allow something inside to pull you down? The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I will just run through. Avoid being distracted at work. Many friends have distracted many people. Please avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid being distracted at work. Anything not work related, don't spend your energy on it. When you close from work, you cannot spend time. Go and carry your wife. You want to go out. Don't go. You close from work. You now go and see your friend. You will just be merry go round the round town. You say you are enjoying life. Which life are you enjoying? I'm not enjoying life. You want to enjoy life. Go and carry your wife. And you people should go. Hey, my wife has not closed from work. Who is with the children? Hey, we have people. Okay, go and wait for your wife at home now. Go and wait for your wife at home. Many people that go for outing without their wife, they spend a lot of money. Hello, church. Many people that go for social things without their wives, they spend a lot of money. And these are money that are wasted. It's not bringing anything back. But when the wife is there, and they go with their wife, and your friends say, okay, hey, let's, you will take more. Now let's spend them more. Where you say, ah, okay, let's just take one, one bottle and go. Ah, one, one bottle. We want to stay here till 1 a.m. No, why we ever stay with the husband till 1 a.m. In a party, what? We draw the trouser. Let's go, my friend. What do you mean? My wife cannot talk to me like that. She will display in that place. You will follow her immediately. So if you must go to an outing, go with you. Sometimes I call her my police woman. Go with your police. Eh, you don't want to say. Go with your police what? I didn't say go with policeman. Go with your policewoman. My children know. When, when I ask them, you know, oh, who is that this policewoman? Ah, they will laugh. They say, it's from you. <laughs> go with your policewoman. She cautions. She directs. She, not that she directs. She's cautioning. She's making you to see things in another dimension. She's preventing you from wasting your resources. The point is that I don't even I can't go to places without my wife. No, they say I should come somewhere. You don't want me to come with my wife. Don't. Of course, they won't call me because when I come there anyway, I will preach. And you know my preaching. I'm not anybody that may be sitting there, governor or president. Anybody, I will say it the way I believe God is saying it. And we won't give you money. Ah, you told you I need your money. You don't know God has said to me before. You, you, which money are you? If you give me, I will pray for you. Honey. If you don't give me, it will not stop me from preaching. The truth is that God has said to me, Hallelujah. Go the extra mile to research and give the day report of your work. Go the extra mile. How many of you watched the cathedral video yesterday? It's part of the work we have been doing small, 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 gathering, gathering. And the boy who prepared the video, I sent many of those things to him. I asked Ade you to say. But one time he did something, I said, what is this? Now go and sit with Ade and all of you should begin to arrange these pictures and videos into different stages. I gave them the stages that you saw on the video. Stay one, stay two, up to that 14. Where I go, sit with Ade. Uh, after about three hours, he came and said they finished. I dare you go and finish. Okay, I dare you can go. Yeah, come and show me. And I 
have started going with him. Oh no, who put it? Was he at the ah this okay? At this now an engineer, so I can excuse that. Fear, move it to the hey, this one, move to the move. Is there another one, one hour, one and a half hour? Restructuring. And I say, okay, go and use this. This music you put, this pitching English. Please, I don't want pitching English. Remove the pitching English. Start with this, CC Winer. Go to this. I sent all the song I will want. And when it gets to this stage, she say, okay, see what the Lord has done. And when we are getting to the, you say, oh, this house will be filled. And he went and did it. And when we watched it yesterday, how did you see it? Beautiful. Even the short form that I sent to few people, my children, all of them say, wow, this is amazing. Nobody said so. All those pictures that daddy will just snap aside and fold. So, this is was his plan. I was just snapping it, but when it was time, God just gave the inspiration how to do it. Beloved, the Lord will help you set your mind, set your mind on what you want to do. Go the extra mile to research. You may, and nobody is the custodian of all knowledge. What did I say, church? Nobody. But even people that they say they have PhD, not that they know everything, but they were able to research, they were able to discover things that are not common, gathered it together, they were able to link with people, liaise with people, work with some people, and coordinated everything. Nobody is the custodian of all knowledge. You are wise, we are wise. Yoruba says, Omodegbon Agbagbon La Vida Ilefe. That means small children are wise. Elderly people are wise. Is that wisdom they used to create to establish Ilefe town? So gather the wisdom of people. Though that's what leaders do. That's what managers do. They say somebody is a project manager in charge of so so project. There are some people that read chemistry. They turn out to be project managers. Because they are able to gather from electrical man, structural man, steel man, mechanical man, uh, material corrosion man, and they have the ability to gather it. You need the ability. Go the extra mile. You see some of these managers, they stay in the office still late because they are gathering information. They are, they are packaging them together. Just like what you saw yesterday. We package it together. Do the extra mile, the extra work in your company. And you see that you'll be noticed for greatness in the name of Jesus. Hmm. I said something. Go the extra mile to research and give detailed report of your work. The report you submit is a reflection of you. The report you submit in anything is a reflection of you. Do a detailed work. Do a detailed research. Think ahead. What will people think? Think ahead and put your thinking in paper. Some people, when it comes to anything right of they can. No, please. If you are going to succeed, you must learn to put your thinking in paper. Either you are drawing, you are doing an analysis, you are doing a report, you are writing your BSc, your thesis, your master, your PhD. Learn to be able to put your thinking in a report. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Diligence and hard work, they yield good results. Shall we just stand up to pray? Let's just stand up to just thank God. We have said many things, and I believe in the course of this world, the Lord will have, you will have caught something, and the Lord will have ministered to you. This hand is resting over you to make you mighty. He's leading you on the pathway to greatness, on the pathway to increase. The power of God is coming over your life. Begin to say, Lord, empower me as I go on this pathway to greatness, this road map to greatness. Hey, help me to walk therein and get to the end. Empower me. Grant me inspiration. Grant me revelation. And Lord, give me the ability, the boldness, Many people lack boldness. Say, Lord, grant me boldness. Ah, ah, church, you need boldness to succeed in life. You need boldness to do great things in life. 
Not every time you, you, are, you are going back. No, let them use somebody else. No, I don't want to be at the forefront. Who says then you don't want to be a star? Stars are at the forefront. Empower me with the grace of stardom. Empower me with the grace of stardom. I want you to pray that prayer. Father, empower me with the grace of stardom. With the grace of stardom. Empower me. Energize me. Give me the inspiration. Move me by your spirit. Thank you for what you have done. We give you all the praises. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father, I want to thank you for this morning. We have waited upon you. We have prayed. You have answered. You have proved to us that you shall be Jehovah on our behalf. Now you have told us that we have dwelt long enough on Horeb. We should take our journey. And you have charged your children. That idea, that walk, that thing, they've been sitting at home. It's time for them to rise up and trust God that God is opening door. I decree today your children have heard your word and they are rising up to go forward every barrier before them are leveled in the name of Jesus your word said see the land I have set it before you go in and possess father the land in their industry the land in their career the land in their business the land in their marriage you have said before them I command them to go in and possess the land I command them to go in and become victors I command them to go in and become more than conquerors in the mighty name of Jesus oppositions and barriers before them are leveled ah, the Bible says the mountains keep like rams and the, me, the hills they met away. I command mountains, I command hills of opposition, mountain to, to, to melt before the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is carrying you further. I say God is carrying you further. God is... I, I,